unassuming townhouse, identical to its neighbors, with neat windows of peonies and a door painted in a pleasant red. Miss Romero's School of Charm read the embossed type above the door. A bell tinkled somewhere far inside, and a few muffled footsteps later, the door swung open with a creak, framing a tall woman in spangled robes and a sharp white bog in the doorway. Hello, darling, she said, gesturing Fee in. You're just in time for my next class. I'm Miss Romero, purveyor of pleasantries and enchantress of etiquette. I'll teach you when to say what, what to say when, and when you ought to say nothing at all. She leaned on the banister, regarding Fee an unlit cigarette between her spidery fingers. Pray tell you do have a name, don't you? She said, eyebrow arched, regarding the gangly girl on her doorstep, her disheveled hair and sickly pallor, in a coat two sizes too big, her knobbly knees knocking together in the cold. <coughs> Fee, said Fee, already regretting having come here. Fee, said Miss Romero, is that all of it? Um, Serafina said Serafina, but I do prefer a fee. Well, Serafina, she said, looking her over sharply, we've got a lot of work to do. Fee was shown into a wide room where a few other girls were seated around, with sallow skin, white hair tucked in prim buns, all wide-eyed with a sort of hungry look about them. The table was set with fine china, brightly polished silverware, and a cluster of candles at the center, their flames flickering high, casting dark shadows. They turned quietly, their faces gaunt in the dim light, to face Miss, Rom Miss Romero, gazes intent, unblinking. Now, as I was saying, we'll learn which fork to use, how to engage in polite conversation, and yes, what to do if you're feeling a bit peckish at dinner, said Miss Romero, and with a laugh added, zombies must eat too. She put her arm around Fee, and Fee caught an unmistakable, overwhelming whiff of her decay, smothered deep within layers of perfume. Fee had to admit that Miss Romero hid her undeadness well beneath her pearls and proclivity for being proper. She swept through a room with the grace of one that hasn't had to hobble on withered legs. Being suave doesn't come naturally to the undead. She ate with such class with a fork, you wouldn't ever have thought her to have gnawed on a human limb before. Her bronze sprayed cheekbones gave her this ineffable aura of regality that didn't seem to be from the years she had spent in the dark in her home starving as the hunger for human flesh almost consumed her. She seemed normal. And Fee wanted to be her. She wanted to be a part of the outside world, not confined to her flat and her freezer of backup brains, not constantly be thinking of how gratifying it would be to smash open a human skull when on public transport. To be a regular 20-something woman, who thought about Hugh Grant and fluffy dogs and going on benign first dates. She steeled herself. After three years of self-pity and brain binges, she was going to put herself out there and pretend to be a real, pulse-possessing woman. Just last week, Will, the bloke from the coffee shop, the one with the flat white, had asked her out, and in a fit of panic, she had accidentally said yes. 